Hi all, I hope you're doing well in these troubled times of lockdown. Um, not sure about you, I quite like being at home. Anyway, um, Postman's been today and bought me a necessity, something that I need to get by in life. Here it is. First 3D printer I've ever owned. Um, didn't go down the filament route straight to the uh, resin. Uh, let's see how we get on. So the Elego comes very well packaged. Um, snug fit inside the box. Uh, two polystyrene, it's like a polystyrene coffin. Uh, fits all the way around, so looks like that could take a knock or two to protect it. But once you take the top half off, you end up with this and the toolkit box. The toolkit box fits in there, so that comes out. And then in the toolkit box are or is all of this. Now these, I don't know how well they show up, they're a pair of flush cutting pliers. Uh, something which most wargamers will be familiar with. And then you've got a power pack with the power lead. A measuring cup with gloves. Not sure what that is at this stage. Uh, decorating scraper, metal. These, I believe, are funnels for pouring the stuff back into the tub when you've finished. A couple of masks. Uh, good quality ones, by the looks. Um, a small... I don't know if that's focusing, but that is a hex screwdriver. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So, uh, a plastic scraper. So, I'm guessing different applications for those. More Allen keys. Now, that Allen key, I believe, is the same size as that. So, maybe it's a spare. And then some nuts inside, along with another Allen key. Now, this memory stick comes with the software that you need and also a demonstration file which will be the first thing that I print I think it takes about four hours so I'm going to turn the camera back off and get the rest of it out now back again in a few minutes the 3d printer is underway it's starting to do its slices um, you can see here uh, this box stops any UV light going in there and affecting the resin now I've had some experience with what are called filament 3d printers but they are nowhere near the kind of um, finish that you would need for a, a miniature so i'm trying this method this is why i've jumped straight in never been in the presence of one of these before so i've watched youtube videos but you know no one's given me a demo just trying it on let's see if it goes you know it's gonna fail but hey this is how we learn um, the way it works as a process, for those that don't know, you have resin. The resin is photosensitive. It goes hard if it's exposed to sunlight. And the way this machine works is whatever model you've got, in this case a chess piece, um, it slices it. And you say how big you want the slices. Now, I might be... It's definitely thousandths of a millimetre. I think it's working round about 40 thousandths of a millimetre. And it, what it will do, you have a light underneath in here. Um, you have the screen above it and the light is shone through the screen. So the screen here, you see an image of the layer that is being exposed at the moment. When it goes black, what it's doing is lifting the plate out the fluid and then putting it back down again. And then it shows the next one. Now you have these images. Now bear in mind there's a thousand, a thousand of them. Um, it shines, it's on for about between five and eight seconds, depending on the setting. This is the demo file, so I've had nothing to do with these settings. And then it, it does the next slice, and the next slice, and the next slice. And it keeps going until it's done all 1,000 slices. When it's done 1,000 slices, we'll know if it's worked or not. Often though, um, from what I've seen on YouTube, from people who know, who have forgotten more about these machines than I will know, um, the first print often fails because uh, the plate's um, not adhesive enough, doesn't have a key for the resin to stick in, uh, the settings haven't been set exactly right so I may have messed up there, or it might be that there's some dirt in the bottom of the vat. Now the vat is um, it's like a glass boat, and the resin sits in there and the light is allowed to shine through. One of the common problems is that it sticks to the bottom of the vat rather than the plate. Fingers crossed it'll work, but we won't know until it all comes out in about four hours. So, all the best. Catch you soon. 
Okay, <coughs> it's been four hours. Now you can see the things that we've printed out. Now the process is basically, you take them out of there, or you take the plate off, then you use the scraper. Now I managed to get them off with the plastic scraper. I didn't have to resort to the metal one. I'm always I was reluctant to use the metal one because I thought that as they are soft um, plastic at that stage, I didn't want to be too vigorous with metal. Um, initially, I couldn't get them to move, then all of a sudden they just popped off. It, it's almost like there's a knack with the plastic scraper. I mean, you can't see on the camera, but that looks fairly similar, both sides. Um, but they came off, maybe it was the angle I was coming at it with. Um, I don't have any rubbing alcohol, so I use some um, meth-based meth -based cleaner. Not easy to say this time of night. Um, that's all I had to hand. Um, I've got some methylated spirits that I'm picking up tomorrow, which um, should speed the process up. And then warm soapy water, dry them off with a paper towel, and then I've put them in this UV box to finally harden them. Just give them a rotator again. Um, I will make something more substantial than this. You can still see where the water's on it. Um, drying off, maybe. I've missed a stage out there where I should heat it. I mean, I've got a heater, but I didn't want to dry the water off with heat in case that had a, an effect. Um, and this is an old UV box that I've got for making printed circuit boards. Hopefully that'll work. Um, so that will um, cause them to react. Obviously, this time of night, there's no sunshine to put them out in. Hopefully this is enough, but I will build something better. Okay, I've already started my next thing in. Uh, this one's a miniature that I've got from... Um, I sponsor someone as a patron. Hopefully these... Um, oh, I forget the name of them. Them like demon ogres, I think. Hopefully they'll come out all right. And then uh, we'll take it from there. But that'll be in the morning, so that little beauty will run through the night. It's 60 watts, so uses roughly the same temperature... Same energy as an old light bulb so yeah there we go catch you again soon so not sure how well this is going to show up on the camera and it is um a clear resin so if i hold him up there that doesn't look too bad but you can see there the quality of the miniature that i ran through last night so andy reckons these pop even more when they're sprayed um, it's not glued together yet, I've just um, friction fitted, if you like. I've been held in place by friction, these hands, these two hands. But you can see the level of detail. I don't know how well this camera is working at this range, but that is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, in essence, he's come in three pieces that you see here. His uh, left hand. Uh, the right hand with the sword. There is an optional weapon, which I'll show you in a bit. But the rest of the body and the head all came in one. Um, the other components, wait for it to focus, this alternative weapon. So if you've got a couple of these guys running around, you can have them with different weapons. And also a flag on his back, which is often known in 40k as a shoot me stick. Um, I mean, that is what he'll be like when he's done. I'm just making the, the beast that he's sitting on now. That's going to take six hours. And then it'll be the base after that. Um, can't wait to get them all done. I am looking forward to doing all of these. Um, and I'm going to undercoat one in a bit to see what he looks like. Hopefully this guy looks all right on the... Um, the video and that it's focusing okay um it's just a shame i've put this photo on one of the forums and i mentioned that it's just a shame the paint job i do uh, isn't as good as the quality of the miniatures but you could say that about the quality of most miniatures that i buy um hopefully you can see the level of detail in there i should have done one of these videos um when he was gray primed because you would have seen it then but hopefully there's enough details there um, looking through the camera lens because you zoom up I can see now that I've got to touch up some of the paintwork somewhere but the, you get the idea um, I th 
think these are like a race of Japanese ogres. Uh, you can definitely see the Japanese influence on the character and you can definitely see the ogre influence. But when I did an internet search, they tend to be painted um, yellow and red, which is why I went for that. Um, the grey hasn't really worked on the body. I think I might have been better going for a brown for the fur, uh, which would have made the miniature on the back and the horns and spikes of the dog, for want of a better word, a canine, um, better. The, the, the contrast between them would have been better. I think the grey and the silver blend in a bit. But you get the idea. I'll, uh, not bad for a first print. I'll catch you again soon.